Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today we're taking a good look at the Radeon R9 290, and this is actually my first AIB review sample of the Radeon R9 290. It was sent in by Gigabyte. It's the OC model. And as you can see, it's still working today. It served me very well. So yeah, very nice graphics card that. It was once quite a powerful graphics card back in 2013. It was selling for around $400 US. And yeah, at, even at that price, it was considered to be a real steal as it was coming up against much more expensive parts from NVIDIA, and this was delivering similar levels of performance. It was later refreshed, I think in 2015, with twice as much VRAM as the R9 390, and the MSRP was dropped to $330 US, so that sounds pretty good, but timing-wise, it wasn't great because the 290s were selling for less than that, and the extra VRAM wasn't particularly useful at the time. So it was kind of an unwelcomed product, though the 390s did prove to be rather worthwhile, I suppose, down the track. Anyway, that was the second generation GCN Architecture's last outing, and by late 2016, it was no more, at least as far as the brand new market was concerned. There are still plenty of these six-year-old GPUs kicking around, as they are still quite capable. After all, it is a 250-watt part packing 2,560 cores, and the Gigabyte OC model that we have on hand comes clocked at 1,040 megahertz. The R9 290 also packs a very wide 512-bit memory bus, along with 5 gigabits per second GDDR5 memory, and this allows for a peak bandwidth of 320 gigabytes per second, roughly the same bandwidth as the RTX 2060, for example. So it should still be able to tackle the latest games with relative ease, and that's what we'll be looking at today. For this one, I'll be looking closely at performance at 1080p in about a dozen titles, and then we'll jump to a 33-game breakdown comparing the R9 290 and RX 570 head to head. The test system used includes the Core i9 1900K clocked at 5 gigahertz with 32 gigabytes of DDR4 3200 memory. As for the drivers, we used Adrenaline 2019 edition 19.2.3 for the Radeon GPUs and Game Ready 419.35 WHQL for the GeForce GPUs. Okay, time for some benchmark results. First up, we have Apex Legends and for gaming at 1080p, the Radeon R9 290 still has what it takes, delivering over 60 FPS on average with a 1% low of 53 FPS, so very playable performance. This placed the R9 290 on par with the GTX 1060 3GB and just behind the Radeon RX 570, again very respectable performance from the now 6 year old GPU. Moving on to the Division 2, and here the R9 290 was again able to deliver playable performance and while it did fall short of 60fps with the ultra quality preset, it was still able to match the RX 570 and GTX 1060, so really not a bad result at all. Frame rates and Shadow of the Tomb Raider were quite impressive. Here the old 290 beat the 6GB 1060 while falling just shy of the Radeon RX 580. Again, it did just fall short of averaging 60fps, but even so the resulting performance was still very playable. Forza Horizon 4 does a good job of leveraging the more recent versions of AMD's GCN architecture, and we've seen that when comparing the 5th gen Vega parts to Pascal and Turing. That said, the 4th gen RX 570 is considerably better than the 2nd gen R9 290, providing 18% more frames on average. That's a pretty big performance improvement for the RX 570, and it'll be pretty interesting to see if there are many or any other games to show these kinds of improvements. Next up we have Hitman 2, and here the R9 290 and RX 570 are basically delivering identical performance. The 290 did fall short of 60fps on average, but with the same 51fps 1% 1 low as the RX 570, the experience was basically identical. The R9 290 did struggle a little in Just Cause 4 with just 46fps on average. That said, while it did fall just short of the RX 570 and 3GB 1060's average frame rate, the 1% 1 low was actually slightly stronger. Overall performance was decent, certainly playable, but ideally you will want to turn down the visual settings for slightly better frames. Moving on, we have Resident Evil 2, and here the R9 290 was very playable at 1080p using the maximum in-game quality settings, averaging 72 FPS. This did place it a little bit behind the RX 570, but it did manage to match the GTX 1060 6GB. As you might have expected, the R9 290 does rather well in Fortnite, averaging 74 FPS with the epic quality settings enabled. This placed it on par with the RX 570, and while this did make it a good bit slower than the RX 580 and GTX 1060 in this title, it really doesn't matter too much for those playing at 1080p. Frame rates in Metro Exodus weren't great, it has to be said, 
And with just shy of 40 FPS on average, it did match the RX 570, but like I said, overall performance wasn't great, and you'll certainly want to dial back the quality settings a little. The R9 290 was ever so slightly down on the RX 570 and Rainbow Six Siege, and while this meant it was able to deliver playable performance, for a smoother experience you will want to turn down some quality settings, and turning something down like the render scale with TAA enabled will solve the issue pretty easily. Battlefield 5 was also playable using the old R9 290, and this time was roughly on par with the RX 570, and that's something we've seen quite a bit of now. It seems as though for R9 290 owners, you really need something like an RTX 2060 or Vega 56 to be a worthwhile upgrade. Now, the second last game that we're going to look closely at is World of Tanks, and here the R9 290 averaged 74 FPS to match the RX 570 exactly. With over 60 FPS for the most part, performance was very smooth, and for those playing at 1080p, I'd say the R9 290 still provides ample frames. And last up we have Far Cry New Dawn. Here the R9 290 averaged 70 FPS, allowing it to match the GTX 1060 3GB and RX 570. For this title, 70 FPS on average with a 1% low of 60 FPS is perfect. And for those who possess a 144Hz display will no doubt want more, those making do with 6 year old tech will be very satisfied. Of course, one of the downsides to using old hardware is power consumption, and by today's standards the R9 290 isn't exactly efficient, or at least it isn't very efficient. After all, this is a 250 watt TDP GPU delivering similar performance to an RX 570, a 150 watt TDP part. This meant for roughly the same performance, total system consumption increased by 32% with the R9 290. So that's not great, but a decent 600 to 700 watt power supply will have you covered. Okay, so there you have it, the Radeon R9 290 in 2019. Though so far we have only looked at 13 of the 33 games that I tested. Uh, I did that to spare you having to go over the other 20 titles. That would have taken quite some time. So we're just going to jump to one of those head-to-head -head comparison graphs, and we'll check one of those out in a moment. Uh, also, please note for any of you wanting to check out results for other games, Prey, Warframe, and, well... The other 18 games that we didn't look at uh, you can do so for free on our patreon page so the link for that will be in the video description anyway i think it's about time we jumped over and had a look at the 290 head to head with the rx 570. this is pretty much what we were expecting to see based on the 13 game sample we just looked at the radeon r9 290 was just two percent slower on average when compared to the rx 570 but we do see a few games where it was slower by a seven percent margin or greater Likewise, we also see a few examples where it was faster by a 7% margin or greater. For me, the Wolfenstein results aren't that surprising. This Vulcan-based title is really good at utilizing many cores, and with the R9 290 packing 25% more cores and 43% more bandwidth, it's technically the more powerful GPU when properly utilized. Granted, it doesn't clock quite as high, but when comparing AIB models, the clock speed deficit isn't that huge. Still, there are examples of modern games that do take advantage of the more up-to-date GCN architecture, and we certainly see this with titles such as Forza Horizon 4, as well as a few others, but to a slightly lesser degree. So, in short, the Radeon R9 290 is very similar to the RX 570 in terms of performance, though you don't want to just assume they'll always deliver comparable performance, as the margin can be as large as 20%. That said, if you're in the market for a new graphics card, and I don't mean brand new, just new to you, and you have around $100 to spend, give or take, let's say $30, uh, what should you buy? Uh, for around $130, you can snag a brand new RX 570. Uh, meanwhile, for around $80 US, you can get your grubby mitts on a secondhand R9 290. Uh, that appears to be the average selling price on eBay right now. Earlier in the year when I made our mega used graphics card guide, I found the R9 290 to be one of the best value secondhand deals, coming out at a cost of 74 cents per frame. A secondhand RX 570 cost 87 cents per frame, as they were typically selling for $94 US. Today though, the average selling price of an RX 570 on eBay is more like $60, and that makes it the obvious choice for bargain hunters. But ignoring secondhand RX 570s for a moment, I still feel as though a brand new RX 570 is a better deal than a secondhand R9 290. For me, saving $50 really isn't worth it. Again, these are six year old graphics cards with no warranty, and you can safely assume most of them have had a pretty tough life. So unless you're getting an R9 290 for, I don't know, I reckon probably $40 or less, then I'd personally pass on it. 
I know that really isn't a lot, and it is a pretty awesome graphics card for $40, but when you weigh up your options, that sort of price for me makes sense. Now, let's reverse the situation though. What if you have an R9 290 and you're looking to upgrade? What is the best solution available right now? I'd say it would have to either be the GTX 1660 Ti, RTX 2060, or Vega 56. It really just depends on pricing in your region. There is the occasional Vega 56 graphics card available at a killer price, but you have to be a bit lucky with timing on those. Still, if you can get Vega 56 for $350, then it's certainly worth considering, and under $300, it really is a must. Short of that, though, we have the RTX 2060 at $350 and the GTX 1660 Ti at $280. If you bought the R9 290 new all those years ago, then you would have spent around $400 US. So assuming you're willing to spend around that much again, something like the RTX 2060 really is a nice fit. That said, I'd be very tempted to grab a GTX 1660 Ti for just $280 US. They offer a lot of value at that price. Wrapping things up, I think it's fair to say that with a few minor tweaks to the visual settings, that the Radeon R9 290 is still very usable today. And well, that's good news for those of you with older graphics cards hoping to upgrade to one of these. Uh, that said, if you are, you will have to get it very cheap for it to make sense. So cheaper than the average selling price on eBay. So keep that in mind. Also, for those of you using a 290 and wanting to upgrade to something else, there are quite a few options available and they all cost less than what you would have spent four to six years ago on one of these. So yeah, that's good news, I suppose. Anyway, I think that's probably going to do it for this one. I hope you enjoyed the benchmarks. And remember, you can jump over to our Patreon page for all 33 graphs if you want to take a closer look at any of the games tested. Thank you for watching. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.